Thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much. And uh, as, you, as you become more and more experienced uh, in the business, your resume gets like longer and longer. Whenever I talk about my, my career, when I talk about the USS Ranger, I have to remind the, the next generation that when you Google stock that, it's not the wooden ship of sail, right? It was the aircraft carrier, because there's a lot of ships that we had uh, named the USS Ranger. But uh, it is just a joy to be here. Who was here last year? Okay. Um, when, when they asked me if I'd do this, I jumped at the opportunity because I always jump at the opportunity to talk about what I am passionate about, which is people and partnerships and, and this, this part of the business. Um, but what I didn't realize was that Sue Gordon was here last year as the keynote speaker. And you probably heard this in public speaking, there's, there's two, normally two rules, right? Conventional wisdom. If you're speaking, you never want to follow lunch or a circus act. Um, I've added a third to that, which is you never want to follow lunch, a circus act, or Sue Gordon. Right? And I've done it before, and she is a hard act to follow, but um, it is a joy for me to be here. I want to welcome all of you that are here. Uh, for those who are celebrating, uh, celebrating Rosh Hashanah, I want to wish you a uh, pleasant and peaceful new year and uh, hopefully a new year that brings some peace and uh, some healing uh, to the region. Uh, I want to start by thanking you, as Lindy was, for being here. And you'll hear this a couple times from me. You know, what you spend your time doing matters, right? Or at least it should. What you spend your time doing matters. Uh, so first, I want to thank everybody who put this together, right? Clarence Jobs, the sponsors. If you do me a favor, when you're walking around, take some time to thank those people, the videographers, the sound crew, uh, the people who are amazing, because I can't draw at all, right? If you haven't seen these artists, they're just amazing, but take some time to, to thank them. Um, thank each other, because what, what you spend your time doing matters, and the fact that you are making this a priority um, matters, and it should. Uh, do me a favor, and when you go back to your organizations, Thank whoever supported you coming here, right? Because uh, they have the right perspective in investing your time and energy in being here matters for your organization. So make sure you take the time to thank them when you go back. All right, Lindy said she had four things. I have three things for you today. Uh, I always speak in threes. If you've seen me speak, you've probably heard this before. I speak in threes because all great things come in threes. Right, if you think about this, the Holy Trinity, earth, wind, and fire, right? Uh, three Musketeers, the, the candy bar, the, the swashbucklers, right? Um, I could go on and on, but I won't. Um, but the, the truth is, as I get older, three things is about all I can remember, right? The fourth thing I kind of remember, but three things I can remember. So I will talk to you this morning just about uh, people, about talent acquisition and about partnerships, all right? So I, I saw that this audience, I, I just saw it with Lindy that you, you like audience participation. So raise your hands if you have heard this phrase before. Mission first, people always, right? Mission first, people always. 34 years in the Navy, I heard that everywhere I went, but for some reason it just didn't resonate with me. Um, I liked those words, but something just seemed wrong about it. And then at, at some point in my career, I had this epiphany, it's backwards, right? People first, mission always. And I am adamant about that. I've had some heated debates with a lot of my colleagues that are senior leaders within the community, but I am adamant that we need to put people first, mission always, because by definition, if, if you put mission first, which is really important, right? Everybody agrees that both those things are important. If you put mission first, people always, by definition and by design, people are an afterthought, right? They're coming secondary. And you get so absorbed with mission that you forget to invest time, energy, resources in your people, right? So for me, say with me, People first, mission always. People first, mission always. 
all right? You're a disciple now. Help me spread that word, right? And remember the rationale. All right, talent acquisition. All right, this is another audience participation. Raise your hand if the main problem your organization has is you have way too many talented people. One, too, too many. So go see her, she's, she's in excess. Uh, normally when I ask this, there's no hands or very few hands. And if you ask her like why she's raising her hands, she probably is amazed at the, the individuals that you have. But we are all in the business of seeking talent. We are all in the business of competing for our nation's best and brightest, right? If you want talent, find talent. If you want talent, invest in growing that talent, right? Which is why I love being around this group because you're in the people business. You're in that talent acquisition business, right? And how do you attract talent? This was one of my greatest joys when I was the director of NGI. I had been there uh, for about six months and I was talking to one of my friends and they said, hey, you know you're getting a reputation for stealing talent. My response was, I'd like to consider it attracting talent, right? And there's a difference. People want to be on high-performing teams doing important work, right? So think of those things, mission and people again. I'll start with the mission. And we're fortunate in, in this business that we have meaningful work, right? One of my leadership principles I call the great American theory. I truly believe deep in my heart that people in this business do not wake up in the morning saying, I hope I suck today and I do something meaningless, <laughs> right? Maybe some, right? But a majority of the people that are in this business wake up in the morning excited because they want to do something meaningful and they want to do it exceptionally well, right? So um, make sure as you're attracting talent that people understand what they will become a part of, right? This team of teams that they will have the uh, opportunity to be a part of. And if you want to attract that talent, be an organization that values people, right? Be an organization that values culture. And Lindy was saying, execution eats strategy. There's also a saying, culture eats strategy, right? And I believe that uh, to the depths of my soul. When I was coming into NGA, I was looking at the organization, um, and I, I like to read the raw comments on employee engagement surveys, right? And I told the team, hey, I, I want to see the raw comments. And they were, they want to give me a PowerPoint presentation, right, that shows like the trends. I'm like, no, I want to see the, the raw comments. And they're like, it's like 600 pages. I'm like, yeah, I want to see it. But I, I read those things, put it on thick skin, but I look for trends, right? I look for what are things that are, people are saying multiple times that we need to address as an organization. And what I, what I found was um, they were having some culture issues, right? There was some lack of trust in some of the senior leadership. And when I came in, that was the first thing I wanted to address, um, the culture. And I'd been around the women and the men of, of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. It is, uh, I'm more than a little biased, but it is my favorite agency. I love the earth science observation. I always found that, that team to be Americans, vice Americans, they're very positive. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure they got back to what I thought was their culture. Um, core values matter, right? Culture matters. Um, honor, courage, commitment is something I heard throughout my Navy career. Those words mean something to people in the Navy. Not only like who you are as an organization, but how you operate, right? How you live your lives, on work and off work. And what I discovered at NGA was they had core values. Right, and uh, they, were, they were some of the most brilliant core values designed. It was excellence, accountability, respect, teamwork, and honesty. Acronym spells earth. You can rearrange those letters to spell heart, right? That's pretty creative, right? But what they weren't doing was living those core values. They weren't talking about those core values. They weren't valuing the values. Um, I have them in my pocket, right? I, I walk around with these all the time. We, we made these aspirational where everybody would talk about these things and say, this is who we will be, right? 
Um, and in interviewing people, I would ask them about these core values and which one mattered to them most and why. And there's no right answer because they're all interconnected. And then I would also ask them, hey, if not those words, what's, what's something that resonates with you? And one of the best answers I had was from an individual who had served a full career in uniform in the Marines um, and then was a senior civilian with the Marines. And uh, he gave me a surprising answer. He, he shared with me that he had been uh, teaching leadership to senior NCOs and mid-grade officers. And he was asking some senior NCOs who had been in combat what they valued, valued in a leader. And he said, without hesitation, they said, caring. They said, and you don't, you don't think about Marines saying the first thing they want to know about a leader is that, they, that you care. Right? But they said, we want to know you care. If you care and you ask us to do something, we will do it without hesitation. But if you, we think you don't care and you ask us to do something, hmm. And then we had this discussion, you know, you know how you demonstrate you care? You care. You actually care, right? And you can't fake that, right? So you want to attract talent, make sure people know what they're going to do, that it's amazing, and then make sure that is, as amazing as that is, you value them even more because people are mission, right? So people, talent, acquisition, partnerships. All right, another show of hands here. Who has heard this phrase, it takes a network to defeat a network? Some, not many. Okay, that was a phrase we used um, all the time as we built out our counterterrorism forces, right? It takes a network to defeat a network. Who's on the team? Who's not on the team, right? This is an opportunity for you here today, right? So look to your left for me. Look to your right. Look behind you, right? This is your network, right? This is the, the, the balance of what could be your network. So I will challenge you to meet three people you don't know today. Exchange information, right? And then a week from now, actually use that information to connect with that individual, right? It will make you more effective at your job by making these connections. People and partnerships are our competitive, comparative and competitive advantage as a nation, right? There is nothing more than, uh, important than our humans in doing the tough things we do. We cannot do our mission without great people who we invest in, time, energy, and resources. You know, that is, that is what you are all about, right? So just as Lindy was saying, make this of value to you, right? Walk out of here with new ideas. At one point, I was, I was preparing to, to take over NGA, and I had um, somebody counseling me, and, and they, they said, hey, the challenge you have is that you're alone as the director. And I thought about it for a second, and I said, I'm going to push back on you a little bit there, because I don't feel like I am alone in that job, right? I have, I have former directors I can call. I have uh, sister agency directors I can call. I have uh, a deputy. I have a, uh, associate directors. I have an employee council. I have a supervisory council. I have a lawyer. I have a doctor. I mean, you are only alone if you allow yourself to be alone. And any challenge that you are facing in talent acquisition, somebody else in this room has either dealt with it or is dealing with it, right? So establish this network. I think I have a video. I, I, I love that video clip, right, uh, for, for many different reasons. Um, one, it's, it's, all, it's always fun to watch movie clips, right? Um, two, just their enthusiasm is is awesome, but the, the message of it's, it's not about getting out of the blender, it's about what happens next is what I want to share with you, right? It's not about what happens here today necessarily, it's about what happens going into the future, right? And, and how you take advantage of this time that you're spending here today together to grow yourselves, to grow your own knowledge, to grow your network, um, to do what you do, which is, I would say, the most critical job that we have. 
right, which is going out, finding, attracting talent to bring into our community, right? And uh, so I, I really have a, a special place in my heart for people who do people things, right? And I've been at command sometimes where, where that role is thought of as something that's non-mission, that it's like some sort of support thing. I'm like, there is nothing more important than, than attracting the, and bringing in the right talent, right? It is step number one in building a high-performing team get good people, right? So I, I want to thank you for what you do on behalf of this nation and this planet. It really is important, and enjoy your day here. I think, Lindy, am I out of time, or, or should I take some questions? Like one question. Yep. <laughs> if I could be any superhero, which one would I be and why? No pressure. It's always the first question that's the toughest. Here's, here's something else. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm passionate about the, the importance of diversity and inclusivity. And um, I was troubled this morning even hearing on the, the news that you know, there's this, I think, the wrong approach at even thinking the value of that. And I was hearing people um, you know, thinking about uh, or critical of DEI programs. But I have always been passionate about diversity and inclusive, inclusivity and diverse, diversity from creating a team that, it, that brings diversity of thought, right, to solve complex problems. And, and uh, if, you, if you want to watch a great video, look up Franz Johansson uh, talking about the uh, Medici effect and the power of diversity. And he, he goes through a, a, a pretty simplified innovation process, like generate ideas, choose ideas, like implement ideas. And he walks through every step and he gives real world examples why diverse teams are far more effective and efficient in that process, right? Um, and in, in all my meetings, I sit down and I let people know this. I deliberately like look around the room and I'm like, who's here? Who's not here? Who could be and should be here so that we have a richer dialogue in doing things. And then uh, this gets into my last message for you is the inclusivity, right? It just makes sense because the opposite of inclusivity is exclusivity, which means talent is being wasted, right? So in my meetings, and my team will back me up on this, they know that I will always at some point go around the room and say, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Um, and I lost count of the times where it's, the, it's always like the most quiet person in the room that's just like thinking, and then all of a sudden they, they, they drop brilliance on the table, right? Just like a bomb. And uh, I think out loud, I say, you were gonna leave this room with that idea in your head. So my last, my last ask of you is participate today, right? Be polite, be professional, participate. Take advantage of this. What you're doing with your time matters. I want to thank everybody once again for allowing me to be here. This is my first and best ever Connect series. Give yourself a round of applause.